Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on splenomegaly. For introduction, the gold standard definition of splenomegaly is splenic weight of 50 to 250 grams, decreasing with age. In practice, splenomegaly is detected through palpation of the abdomen during physical examination or by imaging. It is associated with many conditions. For infective causes, it can be acute, like infectious mononucleosis, viral hepatitis, septicemia, typhoid, cytomegalovirus, or toxoplasmosis. Subacute infections include tuberculosis, subacute bacterial endocarditis, brucellosis, syphilis, and HIV. Parasitic infections like malaria, leishmaniasis, and schistosomiasis can cause splenomegaly as well. Next, hematological causes can be subdivided into myeloproliferative, lymphoma, leukemia, congenital causes like hereditary spherocytosis, thalassemia, and others, like autoimmune hemolysis, or megaloblastic anemia. All these may cause splenomegaly, which is enlargement of spleen. Other causes are congestive causes, like cirrhosis of liver, splenic, portal, or hepatic vein thrombosis, and congestive cardiac failure. Inflammatory causes like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis or granulomatous disease like sarcoidosis. Neoplastic causes like hemangioma, cancer metastasis from other regions. Infiltrative causes like Gaucher's disease and amyloidosis, can also cause splenomegaly. For its mechanism, it can be broken down into the following groups. Increased or excessive immunological response causing hypertrophy. Hypertrophy in response to increased red cell destruction. Congestive engorgement in response to increased pooling of blood. Primary myeloproliferative disorders, infiltrative disorders depositing non-splenic material within the spleen, or neoplastic disorders. First we look at the mechanism of hypertrophy from immunological response. This is associated with infectious mononucleosis, bacterial endocarditis, cytomegalovirus, HIV, and other infections. When there is an increased immunological response, such as an infection, the spleen increases in size and function to accommodate additional white cell proliferation and maturation. Hence, there is splenomegaly. Whereas for the mechanism of increased red blood cell destruction, this can occur in hereditary spherocytosis, G6PD deficiency, and beta thalassemia. If there is increased red blood cell destruction, there is also increased activity in maturing lymphocytes attacking the red blood cells, leading to hypertrophy. Additionally, in order to cope with the increased destruction of red blood cells, hyperplasia of the splenic sinus cells also occurs. Another mechanism is due to congestive engorgement. Regardless of the cause of portal hypertension, when it is present, there is an increase in blood backing up into downstream vessels, including the splenic vein and so the spleen. Increased pooling of blood back into the spleen results in engorgement and hypersplenism. There is also evidence that impaired venous return leads to increased intrasplenic destruction of red blood cells and increased phagocytic cell activity in the spleen, contributing to hypersplenism. This is the flowchart showing how liver cirrhosis leads to splenomegaly. In liver cirrhosis, there is increased portal hypertension, the blood backs up to the spleen, causing splenic engorgement and splenomegaly. Next we look at the myeloproliferative disorders and hematological cause. A number of factors contribute to the splenic enlargement seen in myeloproliferative disorders. It can be due to an increase in pooling of red blood cells in the spleen, a greater splenic vascularity, increased cellularity in the spleen, reticular element expansion, or expansion of lymphoid components of the spleen. These factors are dependent, to some extent, on the lineage of the cells proliferating. In one study of patients with primary proliferative polysemia, polysemia vera, the increase in spleen size was attributed mainly to the increase in splenic vascularity. In myelofibrosis and in hairy cell leukemia, it was associated with an increase in both splenic vascularity and cellularity. Whereas in chronic granulocytic leukemia and CAE, the increase was attributed more to cellularity than to vascularity. Now, let's take a look at a simplified summary of the differential diagnoses to consider in a case of splenomegaly. If there is splenomegaly and lymphadenopathy, think of infection and malignancy. If there is splenomegaly and spider nevi, hepatomegaly, and jaundice, think of liver disease. For cases of splenomegaly and fever, consider infectious causes. For splenomegaly and conjunctival pallor, petechia, and ecchymosis, consider cell line and hematological issues. If there is splenomegaly, peripheral edema, and a raised JVP, think of vascular congestion. For massive splenomegaly, think of myelofibrosis, hematological malignancies, and some infections. 
That's all for this video. Thank you.